Thank you so much, Tarot Stack, for sponsoring today's video. Hello, 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 my beautiful cozy babes, and welcome back to the coziest corner of the internet. My name is Chloe Taylor, and I'm going to be taking care of you today. So the reading that we are doing today is really what like gifts are coming, what you're manifesting, kind of that vibe. I uh, When I meditated on this reading earlier, I thought about like I just saw like a present in my mind's eye so these are like the gifts that are coming your way what you're currently manifesting only good things I have set the intention that we're not going to sit here and see like bad things coming your way these are gifts these are beautiful things and I know like there's there's beauty in the negative aspect too but today I just really want you to focus on your joy so if all of y'all could just take like one deep breath really quick through your nose for me just a <sighs> just think about what would bring you joy in this moment, no matter what it is. And then I want you to select one of these cards. So this card here is card one, card two, card three, card four. Each of, each of these resemble a different pile with lots more cards that we're going to go over. So uh, once you've made your selection, go ahead and head down to the timestamp in the description box that will lead you to your reading directly. And don't fret if you have chosen more than one pile, if you felt drawn to all of them, three of them, two of them, maybe you get half a reading from one and half a reading from another. You know, there's no wrong answer here. It's just really letting your intuition lead. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started, starting with pile number one. Before we get into your reading, I do just want to talk a little bit about Tarot Stack. Tarot Stack is an online store that sells tarot decks from indie artists. So if you are looking for a special gift for your favorite friend, your favorite spiritual friend or family member, this is a great place to shop as all of these decks are from independent artists that uh, basically you're not shopping like big box or anything. It's more of like small business vibes and you get to help an independent artist be seen a little bit more. And the decks are so cool. Every single deck that we use in today's reading actually comes from tarot stack. And y'all already know if you've been on my channel for a long time that I work with tarot stack all the time. They are honestly, probably one of my favorite brands to work with. I always jump at the chance when I'm given an opportunity to work with them as I just really believe in what they're trying to do here, which is get these small independent artist decks out into the world more into your hands to be seen by more people. And every single deck that I have ever received from Tarot Stack, the card stock is really high quality. The imaging is high quality. The art is always really interesting. And I have genuinely always been pleasantly surprised. So I hope you'll like some of the decks that you see here today. Everything will be linked down below for you, of course. All right, pile number one, if you chose this pile, we're going to go ahead and give our deck a nice shuffle. Every deck today as well, I know we already talked about tarot stack, but every deck is also new to my collection today. So you're going to see some new decks today if you're somebody that hasn't been here in a while. Or, uh, no, I'm sorry, if you're a regular and you're here, well, both of you, really. But if you're a long-term listener on my channel, you're going to see all new decks today, which I'm so excited. Like, I feel like this past order... Oh my goodness, Terra Stack is just killing it right now. Like, look at the back of these cards. Are you kidding? Look how pretty. I just, ugh. Slay. Slay. All right, we're just going to give these a nice little shuffle. You take a couple deep breaths for me. We're going to see what gifts are coming your way. What gifts? What gifts? What are you manifesting? What is coming? What is the joy? What is the good news? All right, starting out, we have the Seven of Thunder. And I'm just going to lay some of these down and then we'll talk about them. Ooh, then we have the Devil. This is exciting. The Seed of Wands. cute it's like a little seal it looks like and the hierophant all right <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you exactly what I'm getting because these are all like exciting uh blessings good things uh getting the devil in a positive reading in my humble opinion it is always about sex <laughs> 
<laughs> somebody is getting dick down into the crust of the earth. Okay, I'm just gonna call it like I see it. And uh, like, I mean, I mean, come on, look at the card. It's giving Dommy. It's giving <laughs> got a little chain. There's a little boute action. Uh, it's giving. So I do feel that pile number one, a blessing that's coming your way. Maybe you've been celibate for a while. I don't know. But there is some like, there's some naughty time coming. Um, now with the seven of thunder, what I'm really getting from this, I honestly felt like both of these cards were very sexually charged. And obviously, if you're someone that's here that is on the like asexual spectrum, there the good things that can also come out of this is like overcoming addiction, or uh, it could be that you're like aggressively pursuing passion or pursuing uh, aggressively pursuing really just like learning to stand up for yourself more. But if that's not you, uh, dick down. <laughs> and Seven of Thunder, this to me is like, that's like the energy is it's like being hunted by someone, like being hunted. Somebody is chasing you. You are the prize. Okay, that is the energy that this is giving. Now, Seed of Wands, unfortunately, because this is a new deck for me, I do need to just double check. I think the seed is supposed to be like the page maybe, but I'm just going to double check because I am not, I am not for, yeah, it is. It's the page. I was right. Okay. So page of wands. <laughs> this is somebody with a wand that knows how to use it. Okay. So this is either you or another person, somebody with a wand, somebody with some parts that knows how to use it. Uh, because it's, it is a little reckless. Like I won't lie. I feel like there's a little bit of like recklessness to it because the page is, it's a little bit more timid. It's a little bit more, it's not quite stepping into King of Wands territory, right? It's kind of the beginning stage. It's also the beginning stage of creation, getting some like a new hobby. Uh, if you're someone that like you always feel like your hobbies are like your hobby is finding new hobbies. I feel like this is like you actually getting invested in the hobby and taking it all the way in uh, and not just like planning for it and never doing it. But the Seed of Wands could also be like, literally having this person that you have like a fiery, passionate, like chemical connection with. Okay. Physical as well. Physical. And then we have the Hierophant. I'm again, I'm just going to call it like I'm seeing it. The Hierophant to me really does give me like a dominating presence. So does the devil because the Hierophant is like, a mentor, right? This is somebody that would be like a mentor. And this could be you or the other person, to be quite honest. But I feel like both of you, it's like two worlds collide and it's hot and it's heavy and it's exciting and just very passion driven. I'm getting so much passion out of this. So if you feel like that's what you've been jonesing for, what you've been looking for, what you've been hoping for, uh, I, this is literally a wish, a present a wish. It is being fulfilled and granted. Uh, but the Hierophant also, like I said, I always like to give a diverse meaning here because I always want to be respectful for, uh, anybody that's asexual that comes to my channel. I don't ever want you to feel like, oh, every card just means sex or, you know, no, the Hierophant can also be that there's somebody with this new passion project that you're getting invested in. It's like, you're looking for mentorship as somebody that can teach you the ropes. And that's a wish that's going to be coming through. Somebody is going to be there to kind of show you, to show you the way to help you. Now we also have the three of thunder, which the three of thunder, this to me is like overcoming heartbreak. This could also be like an ex that you've really been wanting to get back with is coming back. So I see a few meanings here. For those of you that you feel like the original meaning is ringing true, the message that your guide sent you here to receive is like, this could be the ex that comes back, but because this is a channeled reading for only good things, this isn't like your abusive crazy ex coming back, okay? This is like an ex that you would have wanted back. Uh, if not, this could also be that this new person, this new passion person, passionate connection, they help you to kind of get over that. And I just have to tell you from my own personal experience, I know everybody always wants to hate on rebounds. I married my rebound. Okay. We've been happily married for 10 years together for over 15 and I was his rebound too. So it wasn't just me playing 
with a rebound. Like rebound relationships can work out too. Sometimes they are a blessing because you're not so in your head. You're not so focused on, I need to be with this person. It's like, oh, this is just for fun. And then you find out that it's so fun that you're like, oh damn, when did I catch feelings? (laughs) So the three of thunder, like it's one of those two things. Now, for those of you that are on that like passion project high, this is going to be about channeling this new project into something that like you're using what hurt you in the past to channel it into this new hobby. And it's going to be good. It's going to cause, create a lot of healing for you. And then we also have the flower of stones, which is basically like the queen of pentacles. Y'all, I don't know who here is on their like princess treatment only vibe right now. You are literally going to have it all with this person. They want to treat you right. They want to wine you and dine you. I'm hearing from spirit that they want to like, treat you right in every regard. They want to take you out. They I've never gotten a message like this. I need to be channeling some relationship re- uh, reading soon, I feel like. Um, which actually, this seems like a good place to remind y'all of that. Uh, for the first time ever, and I don't know that I'll be doing a restock, I actually launched some relationship readings on my website uh, where you can get like a private reading one-on-one with me. Um, it's a recorded video, like I channel it and then I send you the video. But uh, if you've been wanting a relationship reading for me, I'm currently offering them for uh, Valentine's Day. So just thought I would mention that. Uh, but Flower of Stones, this is like the Queen of Pentacles. And she is luxurious, abundant. She's in her creatrix energy, right? And it could be he as well. Like, please don't put like the Queen of Pentacles typically shows up as a feminine archetype, but doesn't have to be. You could be somebody that identifies as non-binary, somebody that identifies as male and still be in your Queen of Pentacles energy. But it's somebody that like looks after you, takes care of you and you like anything they give, you know how to multiply and give back, but it's like a balance that feels fulfilling. And I really just feel like you're getting into your like princess treatment era. Okay. That's what I'm hearing. Now let's go ahead and grab an astrology deck. I'm so excited. These cards are so pretty. Uh, so beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm an Aries Mercury. Sometimes when I speak, I like just, it's like anger comes out of my voice and I don't mean it. <laughs> it's so pretty though. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Blessing spirit. Tell us more blessings, more good things. What is joyous? What is joyfully coming to pile number one? I need to know. We need to know. Oh, we got a flyer. Okay. We have got the waning crescent. Okay. So you are getting to like a new chapter I'm hearing because the waning crescent, when it comes to like moon cycles and such, the waning crescent, it's what is building down into a new moon. When the moon is in its waning stage, it's it's coming down to the new moon, not filling up to the full moon. So the waning crescent here tells me that like you are getting to this place where you are turning over a new chapter in your life. Uh, now we do have, if you're watching this when it first comes out, which like my readings most of the time, unless I specify are meant to be timeless, they're meant to come across for you when they need to. But, um, if you're watching this when it's coming out, We will have just had a Leo full moon last week, which means the new moon in Aquarius will be coming up soon. So this could be a time period like this is currently what you might be experiencing is that wind down to a reset or a restart. Um, And this is like a wanted reset, a wanted restart. You might be finding that your routines are feeling stale or like maybe you need to change up your skincare, your hair care, your Uh, how you like eat, like your dietary habits or movement, or maybe even a work schedule, you know, this could go into anything, cleaning schedule, whatever, I feel like routines I'm hearing for pile one. But ultimately, it's like your routines might be feeling kind of off or like you're just not exactly where you'd like to be. But this comes as a reminder that during the new moon, you're going to be starting yourself on a new trajectory. And if you want more information on like where this will hit for you specifically this month, uh, on my Patreon, every single month, I go over the astrology for the month in the monthly reading. Um, And you don't, I want to say the monthly you get at like the mid tier, if you join at the uh, mid tier on my Patreon, you get one of those every month and I'm very detailed about it. So, uh, if you want to know specifically where that's going to be hitting for you, it's a good place to get the information unless you already know, then, you know, it's whatever. Okay. Now we also have, (laughs) I'm telling you pile number one, you are really, you 
I feel like you've had like a lot of time of celibacy. I'm I'm not trying to read it that way only because like I said, I know some of y'all that's not going to hit, but Mars is like our sexual aggression. If you look at somebody's Mars in their birth chart, you can see like what is, what, <laughs> you can see like what is their turn on? What, what could be like a potential kink? What like Mars placements show that. Um, but they also show like how you aggressively pursue something in general. It doesn't have to be the SEX, you know, it could be uh, that you're aggressively pursuing this new hobby, this new passion project, feeling so fired up. It's all you think about. It's all you talk about. You are like eating, sleeping, breathing this. But some of y'all are just eating, sleeping, breathing with someone else. <laughs> okay, now we also have 11, which oh, this is a cool card. So the number 11 in spirituality, it always refers to like a master number. It encompasses a lot because you don't condense 11. So in numerology, usually if you get like a double digit number, like if I add my birthday and my birth month together, I was born on May 14th. If I add five plus one plus four, I get 10. But tens are not significant in numerology. It would become one because one plus zero, one plus zero, which would be 10, right? It becomes one. But if you add up numbers and you get 11, you don't do one plus one equals two. It stays 11. It's a number we don't condense. And that is because 11 is a number that is of mastery. It brings wisdom, victory. It's all of like, it's all of the everything. It's understanding, strength, splendor, um, beauty, knowledge. Like I really feel like pile number one, I am getting such a good vibe from your reading. Like I am feeling my sacral chakra just like expanding. She's glowing. She feels so good. And that is like that powerful sexual energy. It's that powerful creative center. And I really feel like that is what is going to be like exploding in your life in a good way. That is what is going to be like feeling really good. You just feel like life is giving to you very abundantly. Then we have the eighth house. Oh my gosh. The eighth house is literally the sex house. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. The eighth house is the house of Scorpio and it's literally the house. I always call it the dirty, sexy money house because it's all about like money, how other people's money commingles with yours. It's also your assets and it rules over sex. So I feel like that's like self-explanatory. Literally like your, your SEX life is I think just going to get really, really, really good. Uh, and like I said, if that's not you, the eighth house also resembles occultism and spirituality and like getting money from others, but not necessarily in a malicious way. Like it's just like money comes to you more effortlessly from other people. So it's usually like good in business as well. All right. Now I have this wise body deck that I would also like to see just kind of what is being like blessed for you. Now, please remember, I am not a medical advisor or a doctor, uh, but I would like to see like body blessings or things to do with the body. What kind of body blessings? How are we physically being blessed right now? Ooh, okay, there's one. Ebb, we got the card that says Ebb. Beautiful. Actually, I'm gonna stick this up here. So we have ebb. I want to get one more. We have daydream. Okay. I'm going to actually pull up the book for these two because I would like to see what they're on about. Like, I, again, these are new decks to me, so I'm not a thousand percent familiar with every single card yet, but that's why we're doing the reading so we can get into it. Yeah. Um, if you want to try, get into it. Yeah. Sometimes your guides, I feel like some of y'all have like a younger, at least somebody here has like a younger deceased relative guide or like somebody that just would have known Doja Cat. If you own a truck, get into it. Yeah. Like it, somebody like, I don't know why, or maybe that's like a song that you shared with them. Somebody here has a guide that that song is important to them. It's why it's coming up. So, um, okay. 
ebb, insight. The tides of the ocean ebb and flow, and so do the energies of our bodies. We see obvious patterns of this with sleep and wakefulness, and those with a menstrual cycle will feel an ebb and a flow at different times of the month, where output and productivity are either more or less. Ebb is an important part of flow. Flow could not exist without ebb. With this with this card, ebb does not necessarily mean rest, but a state or pattern where there is withdraw or drawback from the momentum of healing. It may present as a time of... Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that maybe you've done a lot of like work with yourself. Maybe you've had a time period that you felt like you weren't getting this, right? You weren't getting dicked down to the crust of the earth. You weren't feeling creative. You were feeling kind of sad and not creative. Spirit is ultimately saying that like, You've been in this state of ebb, but the flow is coming next. And that's what this is showing. Like the flow is coming. And then with daydream, this card is all about like literally letting yourself dream, letting yourself get carried away. Some of y'all I'm also hearing that like you need to get into, um, reading more like you need to get into the spicy book section. Okay. Um, also if you're into fan fiction at all, uh, manacled, manacled by, I don't even know what their name is, but if you've read that fan fiction, I need you to talk to me in the comments and then come to my discord and talk to me about it because never has a fan fiction captivated me and also broken my spirit at the same time and left me wanting more, um, in the best way. But, uh, that's only for like the Harry Potter fandom. If any of y'all like read, I'm not ashamed to admit that I love fan fiction. I used to write it as a kid, like a lot. I had over 30 completed fan fictions and Anyways, I'll share that in an, another time. Maybe on my podcast, I can talk about that. But Daydream, I feel like if you get into like books more, you're somebody that might really benefit because maybe you focus a lot on self-help or psychology or science books or math books. Like there's, or maybe you're like doing a lot of school, but Daydream, like you need to give something to yourself, something to your imagination right now, because it's going to help you. Those of you that are getting into like the creativity and the hobbies and all of that, it's going to help you. And getting into more of like a daydreaming like state is going to help you pull more of what you want towards you. If you continuously are always thinking about what you don't want in life. It's a good thing we don't have instant manifestation because a lot of us will be in trouble. But the more you think about all of the things that could go right, the things you want to create and give more attention, the more and more and more you start to pull that into your life. So daydreaming, really important for you. I recommend the spicy books if you need to, you know, spice up your life a little, think about some new things, get out of the box that you've been in. Uh, and that is, that is, Oh, y'all thank you just I just want to say like thank you for letting me do this reading I feel so good your energy pile number one is so amazing like you are magnetic you must have a fire sign in your big three uh which would be Leo Sagittarius or Leo Sagittarius or Aries I just really feel this like strong um it could be like in the Mars or Venus as well but I'm really getting like sun moon rising as a fire sign one of them uh, but y'all are just giving. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much, Tarot Stack, for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to check them out. Uh, all of their information will, of course, be down below. Any of the decks I used here today are from there. Uh, literally never have I been disappointed with a deck from Tarot Stack. The quality is always amazing. Colors are amazing. Deck choices, inclusivity, the whole enchilada. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, if you want more from me, y'all, the best thing you can do to support your beautiful, amazing local tarot card reader is go join my Patreon. Just do it. Do it for yourself. Go join my Patreon. You can actually join free, I want to say, for about two weeks uh, just to kind of like try parts of it out and see what's there. Um, and then uh, from that point, you can join in even more if you like what you see. Uh, I put out new content on there roughly once every two weeks ish. Uh, sometimes I put everything up like once a month for the month and or like sometimes I'll do like something every two weeks. So there's constantly content going up over there, though. I do monthly predictions over there. That's where you get those. I do a theme for the month. I go over the astrology, bibliomancy, 
I also do a lot of master classes. That's something I've been introducing over the past few months. Uh, we have a master class that went up on vision boarding in December that was really highly well received. And this month, we actually have an astrology master class that launched today. So if you want to learn how to read your birth chart, uh, please do come and join that masterclass. It's available on my Patreon and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's literally like how to become your own pocket astrology bestie so you can decode your own charts. Uh, and I would love for you to see that, be a part of it. And you get access to like 400 plus posts once you join. So definitely come and check it out. I would love to have you there. If you want to follow me anywhere else, of course, that's always cool too. I've got all my social media. I'm at Chloe Taylor everywhere. And, uh, you know, if you feel like you don't have anything to give, I always want to remind you when you're supporting a small creator, share the video, give the video a like, leave it a comment. Those are all like free ways that help me as a creator or any creator that you love. It like helps support them and really spreads their content out more. So just saying, if you want to leave any of that for me, I would really appreciate it. I love you so much. And uh, please do not forget when you stand in your own authenticity, <clears throat> you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I'll talk to you next time, cozy babe. Bye. Before we get into your reading, I do just want to talk a little bit about Tarot Stack. Tarot Stack is an online store that sells tarot decks from indie artists. So if you are looking for a special gift for your favorite friend, your favorite spiritual friend or family member, this is a great place to shop as all of these decks are from independent artists that uh, basically you're not shopping like big box or anything. It's more of like small business vibes and you get to help an independent artist be seen a little bit more. And the decks are so cool. Every single deck that we use in today's reading actually comes from tarot stack. And y'all already know if you've been on my channel for a long time that I work with tarot stack all the time. They are honestly, probably one of my favorite brands to work with. I always jump at the chance when I'm given an opportunity to work with them as I just really believe in what they're trying to do here, which is get these small independent artist decks out into the world more into your hands to be seen by more people. And every single deck that I have ever received from Tarot Stack, the card stock is really high quality. The imaging is high quality. The art is always really interesting. And I have genuinely always been pleasantly surprised. So I hope you'll like some of the decks that you see here today. Everything will be linked down below for you, of course. All right, pile number two. If you chose this pile, this is going to be your reading. So let's see what's fire, what's popping, what's coming to you that is exciting, that is joyous. I'm going to tell you right now, my heart chakra is feeling pretty good. Uh, I feel like when I read, I often do get like a chakra ping and I want to start including that in readings more because I'm a very like somatic worker. Uh, I find that my body holds a lot of answers. And when I read tarot for others, my body can also signal that. And sometimes yours can too. Like if I'm reading something and I call that out and you feel it in your body too, that's like a strong indication that you chose the right pile. So like, let that be confirming for you. I feel like my heart chakra just feels like, I don't know. I just want to like roll my shoulders back and forth and like smile and just like, it feels like good. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. One more of these and then we'll get to dealing. Okay, so we have Root of Wands, which is basically like the Knight of Wands. I'm gonna lay a few cards down and then we're gonna read them. We have the Four of Thunder, oh, so good. I'm here for the Four of Thunder. I'll explain why in a moment. Five of stones. Oh, and the five of stones in this deck is like so good. Another great one. Two of stones. Oh, I love this. Sorry, this deck is still kind of new to me. So like I've, st I've read for it for myself a few times uh, off camera, but it's still pretty new to my collection. So um, I still see like cards that I've never seen before. And this one's really cute. Okay. So right off the bat, so far, what I'm getting is spirit wants you to know that like your vitality is returning. The work that you've been putting into yourself is returning. Um, I feel like you've been doing a lot. Like I see somebody that's like really been committed to their, either it's like your health or your mental health, or maybe you've been like just really into like 
getting a solid routine for yourself, treating yourself well. Uh, but I do feel that with this four of wands, a gift that's coming through that is like a rest period. Um, and this isn't like a, you're going to be shot down. A bad thing's going to happen. Nothing about that is going to come through this reading because the intention I set with this reading was that we would only see the joyous things coming, the exciting gifts, the fun gifts. So the four of thunder is like a wanted, a desired rest and reprieve period. So I do see rest coming. I do see vitality coming. And the five of stones, this is like getting to experience bliss. This is getting to like experience what it feels like to be present in the body, present with yourself, present with nature. And it's, I feel like it's like reprieve from a harsh like time period. It's reprieve from a harsh reality or there's just something about like, I'm hearing like, especially if you've been struggling financially at all, this is like you finally get something that actually gives you relief and not just like, oh, this helps me this month, but what about next month? It's like, this is an actual long-term solution that's going to help you from now moving forward. And then the two of stones, this is all about creating balance in your life, balancing your energy, balancing your time, balancing your emotions. It's feeling like you have created balance in your life and things are just working. Like, you know, you know what I'm talking about when you experience that, like things are just working out for you. And I want you to remind yourself that even if you experience a setback, like today, I, my flight somewhere got canceled and I had to reschedule it. And instead of being so like, oh, how dare they, rah, 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 because there's like a lot of issues going on with flights right now because there was some plane recalls or something. Um, I was like, you know what? Everything's always working out for me. Everything is always working out in my favor. And from this experience, something positive is going to come. Everything's always working out in my favor. So I would say just like keep that in mind uh, because even with the two of stones, if you feel like you have to kind of shift one way or the other, things are working out for you. Okay. And then we also have, the, ooh, the high priestess. Okay. So something that is coming for you is an activation of psychic gift. Now, please remember, again, this isn't going to be scary. This isn't going to be like a ghost pops out the closet. This isn't going to be like something's under your bed. This isn't going to be you astral projecting and freaking out. This is going to be like you trusting your intuition and being like, oh my gosh, that did happen that way. I am feeling like my psychic gifts are improving. You know, unless you're somebody that like genuinely wants to be like in mediumship and you're seeking that. I just, I know there are a lot of people because a lot of us have been conditioned to be afraid of psychic gift or things that uh, we actually could perceive as just like things that go bump in the night when in reality, like we're always overlapping all the time with like other dimensions. And what is the afterlife than another dimension that could literally be overlaying ours at all, all the time. And many of us have been trained to be afraid of that. So I just want to say like, this isn't something that's going to scare you. This isn't a bad thing. This is something that like would elate you to know. You'd be like, oh my gosh, my intuition is freaking fire. I can trust that now. Um, and then we have the seed of wands, which pile number one also got the seed of wands card. This is about starting a new like creative passion project. Uh, for pile number one, it was a very um, adult rated reading, shall we say. Uh, it was an adult rated reading for sure. I do not make my readings for children. Uh, we are not marked that way. Uh, but with the seed of wands, it in your reading, I feel like this is more about creativity. This is more about uh, feeling that vitality, right? Because you have the seed and the root, which the seed is the page of wands. The root would be the knight of wands. It's like you have an idea and you're ready to take it all the way there. But I think interestingly enough, you've already like created some action. You've already started doing something. And the seed of wands tells me that you're going to actually get to a place where you finish that you're resting. And now there's a new project that wants to emerge, a new creativity, a new passion, a new purpose. And uh, something I would just like to remind all of y'all is that, um, I want to say I made like a full podcast episode on this at one point in time, but you're not meant to just have one purpose your whole life. I hate to burst your bubble for anybody here that doesn't know this in like the 
you know, 200 years ago or more, having one purpose for your entire life was more likely because you didn't have the resources that we have today. You can't, we couldn't send an email. We couldn't send a text. We couldn't put our music out on YouTube. We couldn't make short form comedian skits. We couldn't put our art out there unless we carried it by horseback or walked it there ourselves. And uh, So it was likely that you would have one purpose for your whole life because you didn't have access to the books, the materials, the platform, right? Now we have such ease of access. We are able to push anything anywhere in the blink of an eye or less, like quarter blink, okay? Things are able to just move that quickly that it is so unlikely that you will just have one purpose for your entire life. We have the privilege in this day and age at this time on the planet to see multiple purposes born through us. And it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're overconsuming or overstimulated. It's okay if you master something over the course of 10 years and you learn and soak in as much as you can about that thing. And now suddenly you want to do something else. I think some of y'all that came into this reading just needed that permission. Like maybe you've gone to school for something for a long time or thought you were going to be doing something and you've lost your passion for it. It's okay to pivot into something else. I promise you that things are always working out for you. Things are always working in your favor and you are always able to pivot into something else. All right, let's go ahead and pull some astrology cards for you and just see what we've got going on there. I love these cards. They're so pretty. Descendant, so the descendant, I feel like you're going to have to look to your rising sign and it's whatever opposes your rising. So the, I believe that's right. The descendant, I don't believe, I don't think it's like the lowest point in your chart. It's the opposite of your ascendant. Um, actually I'm going to look in the book really quick just to be a hundred on that. Uh, because I really feel like, I feel like I'm right. And I should just roll with that, but I just want to make sure this deck, this astrology deck is so freaking good. It comes with two guidebooks like for different, uh, cause there's so many cards. Like it has like every astrology card you could ever need, but anyways, uh, I'm pretty sure that the descendant is that cross, cross from the opposite side. I don't know why I just became British all of a sudden. It happens. Um, No disrespect to my British friends. Okay, there it is. The descendant, a gentle reflection. Okay, yeah, it is. So it's whatever is a cross. So like if you are a, an Aries uh, an Aries rising, your descendants in Libra. If you're a Libra rising, your descendants in Aries. If you are a Taurus rising, your descendants in Scorpio. If you're a Scorpio rising, your descendants in Taurus. If you are a Gemini rising, your descendants in Sagittarius. If you're a Sagittarius rising, your descendants in Gemini. If you're a Cancer rising, your descendants in Capricorn. If you're a Capricorn, your descendants in Cancer. And if you are a... Leo, your descendants in Aquarius. If you're an Aquarius, your descendants in Leo. Yeah, so it just like switches back. And then if you are a Pisces, your descendants in Virgo. If you're a Virgo, your descendants in Pisces. So basically, that should have covered everyone. This is like, it's like the opposite of, it's the opposite of your first house, which is the house of the self, basically. So the seventh house rules over the opposing. Um, and it's like, it's where we can expand in astrology 
And it's also like how we show up for our partner, for like somebody that we might be with or how well we reach out to others for friendship or collaboration or connectivity, things like that. Okay. Um, like for myself, I'm a Sagittarius rising. And so my direct across is in Gemini, um, which is funny because my moon's also there, but I really do feel when it comes to like friends, I'm a talker. I'm the person you don't get on the phone with me and talk for 20 minutes. We talk for like four hours every time. Uh, I'm a talker. <laughs> so I would say just like look to your birth chart for more of that. <clears throat> because I do feel like that to me says that you're going to be interacting with people more. You're going to be interacting with a significant other or with people more. Um, then we have the, se oh my gosh. And then we have the seventh house, which is your descendant. So the seventh house also is like your romantic partner, your marriage contracts, partners, business partners, um, anything that is like contractually binding would be seventh house material. So uh, a blessing that could be coming is if you're trying to manifest a partner, which I think this is a good time to say this. Um, if you are unaware, I do offer private readings on my website. And for the first time ever, and possibly the only time ever, I actually stocked some relationship readings in my store. And there's something for everyone. So if you would like a reading with me about some of this stuff, like privately, you can book that with me at my website, chloetaylor.com, link down below. Uh, but the seventh house, it is often like manifesting a partner, manifesting a marriage, manifesting um, possibly a business partner, like I said, or... It does have to do with like other people though. Okay, then we have sextile. And sextile, this is like, it helps to create action in your life. So I do feel like even though you're getting this gift of rest, I don't think this is gonna be like you're down for a long time. You're not, and not down in like a bad way, but just like laying down horizontal, like not like uh, sad down or mentally down, you know, it's, I feel like you are going to be having a lot of like action oriented thoughts and feelings that are going to help you to move forward. Then we have the sixth house, which the sixth house is the house of Virgo. It's all about like routines and finding out what routines work for you and getting new routines, right? Remember I said with the two of stones, I talked to you a little bit about routines. So I do feel that a blessing coming to you is like your routines are going to be working for you. Your routines are going to be working. You're going to feel like you are on top of your shit and it's going to feel really good. So this is like a positive thing that's coming. Uh, the sixth house also rules over like pets, small domestic animals. So you could be adding a new pet to the family soon. Uh, if that's something you're wanting, it's definitely something I feel. All right, now we're gonna pull a few cards for the body uh, just to see like what's going on there and what like blessings are coming through that. Uh, I'm somebody that really loves somatic healing and I find that these cards are just a really good way to add that. Please remember I'm not a doctor or like a medical physician or anything. Uh, just because I have a, I'm a certified holistic nutritionist does not mean that I am your holistic nutritionist. Uh, so just remember that this is for entertainment purposes only. But let's go ahead and see. From the body, we have release. Okay, so with release, I do feel that if there, you really are releasing something. Like, and I don't mean just, I don't mean like, oh, like, duh, of course you are. But because there is this like, up in energy, rest up in energy again. I feel like, are you a content creator pile number two? Or you, do you like write books or essays or create videos or do photography or like, I think you're actually releasing something to the world. I don't know what it is because I think there's a lot of you that are doing this. So I'm just like, I'm also seeing like ceramics. Like, do you have like a show for your ceramic pieces or something? Um, but release is telling me that you're actually putting something out into the world. You are releasing something that you have made. And I think it's going to go well. That's why you're like hearing about this because it feels good to release. And that's why you're going to get that period of rest. But like, I think you've been worried about what's going to happen after you've done this. And spirit wants you to know that like, you're going to have a really good release. And then you're going to be able to pick back up and find the next thing. And then we have boundaries. Ooh, we love a boundaries queen. Love that. Uh, okay, so with boundaries, 
I feel like maybe in the past you were somebody that was like more of a pushover or didn't have boundaries or didn't know how they worked. Or maybe you were the person that got weird about boundaries and felt like that was asking too much of you or you couldn't meet somebody's boundaries. I think you're learning boundaries in a new and supportive way that you're actually going to be able to use in your day to day life to get the results from life that you want. You're going to start to like fundamentally like I feel like you can know something, but until you really see it like exercised in your life, you don't really always know. And I feel like with boundaries, you're going to actually start to feel so proud of yourself for how you have changed. Like things in the past that you would have never had boundaries around because you were too scared are no longer even going to bother you anymore. Like you're not even going to, I'm excited for you. Like I almost... I almost get like a little emotional because I know this energy so well. I know how hard that can be, but you're getting to a place where it's going to be like almost fun for you to be like, hell yeah, I got boundaries and what you got, you know? Uh, in any case, thank you so much, Tarot Stack, for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to check them out. Uh, all of their information will, of course, be down below. Any of the decks I used here today are from there. Uh, literally never have I been disappointed with a deck from Tarot Stack. The quality is always amazing. Colors are amazing. Deck choices, inclusivity, the whole enchilada. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, if you want more from me, y'all, the best thing you can do to support your beautiful, amazing local tarot card reader is go join my Patreon. Just do it. Do it for yourself. Go join my Patreon. You can actually join free, I want to say, for about two weeks uh, just to kind of like try parts of it out and see what's there. Um, and then uh, from that point, you can join in even more if you like what you see. Uh, I put out new content on there roughly once every two weeks ish. Uh, sometimes I put everything up like once a month for the month and or like sometimes I'll do like something every two weeks. So there's constantly content going up over there, though. I do monthly predictions over there. That's where you get those. I do a theme for the month. I go over the astrology, bibliomancy. I also do a lot of math master classes. That's something I've been introducing over the past few months. Uh, we have a master class that went up on vision boarding in December that was really highly well received. And this month, we actually have an astrology master class that launched today. So if you want to learn how to read your birth chart, uh, please do come and join that master class. It's available on my Patreon and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's literally like how to become your own pocket astrology bestie so you can decode your own charts. Uh, and I would love for you to see that, be a part of it, and you get access to like 400 plus posts once you join. So definitely come and check it out. I would love to have you there. If you want to follow me anywhere else, of course, that's always cool too. I've got all my social media. I'm at Chloe Taylor everywhere. And, uh, you know, if you feel like you don't have anything to give, I always want to remind you when you're supporting a small creator, share the video, give the video a like, leave it a comment. Those are all like free ways that help me as a creator or any creator that you love. It like helps support them and really spreads their content out more. So just saying, if you want to leave any of that for me, I would really appreciate it. I love you so much. And uh, please do not forget when you stand in your own authenticity, <clears throat> you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I'll talk to you next time, cozy babe. Bye. Before we get into your reading, I do just want to talk a little bit about Tarot Stack. Tarot Stack is an online store that sells tarot decks from indie artists. So if you are looking for a special gift for your favorite friend, your favorite spiritual friend or family member, this is a great place to shop as all of these decks are from independent artists that uh, basically you're not shopping like big box or anything. It's more of like small business vibes and you get to help an independent artist be seen a little bit more. And the decks are so cool. Every single deck that we use in today's reading actually comes from Tarot Stack. And y'all already know if you've been on my channel for a long time that I work with Tarot Stack all the time. They are honestly, probably one of my favorite brands to work with. I always jump at the chance when I'm given an opportunity to work with them as I just really believe in what they're trying to do here, which is get these small independent artist decks out into the world more into your hands to be seen by more people. And every single deck that I have ever received from Tarot Stack, the card stock is really high quality. The imaging is high quality. The art is always really interesting. 
and I have genuinely always been pleasantly surprised. So I hope you'll like some of the decks that you see here today. Everything will be linked down below for you, of course. All right, pile number three. So this is going to be what is joyously coming into your life? What blessings? What are you manifesting? I'm so excited. I feel like every person has gotten a different chakra today. And right now, I'm really feeling like the chakra that is active for me ironically is my throat I'm feeling this reading in my throat chakra so I feel like you are maybe you're somebody that you've like needed to say something that you finally said and it's the weight is off your shoulders or uh, maybe you're somebody that speaks or sings and this is like a good thing for you it brings good opportunities into your life let's see okay we have, oh, we have the death card. Okay. Well, I'll talk about the cards in a second. I just want to lay a few of them out first. All right. Then we have Ace of Stones. Exciting. All right. Then we have the Hierophant. the hero fan. I don't know how people say it. And then we have the two of thunder. Okay. So what these cards are really saying to me is number one, your life is transforming in a massive way because the death card showing up is the death card is literally about transformation. It's like leaving home. It could also be leaving home because like there's this shell, the crab is like gotten out of its shell. Um, leaving home in a way, right? Uh, leaving home, maybe even going on like a trip or travel I'm hearing, um, especially because I see the globe here in the Ace of Stones, like traveling around the world or somewhere across an ocean, uh, especially because the Hierophant here is also like these birds on a beach. I'm really feeling that there is some like joyous travel coming up for you pile number three like joyous travel you're going to be with one of your best friends and you're going to have a lot of choices presented to you i will say though this reading is meant to be all joyous something spirit is telling me that i just need to remind you with this two of thunder you need to really ask yourself what you want to do on this trip before you go when it happens, because I feel like you're going to be lost for time. Like you're going to be like, oh, I have all these ideas of what I want to do, but because you didn't make any concrete plans, it, like it will slip really quickly. So I just want to say like, if this is resonating so far, make sure that you like know what you want to do, because it seems like you have a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And I don't want your your fun vacation travel time to come to an end and you be like, oh my gosh, the, d I didn't plan anything. I didn't do the things I wanted to do. So just want that to be known. Now, we also have the three of thunder. So I do feel like you are working to heal a little bit right now, or you have been and spirit is saying that that healing is coming healing to your heart. And then we have the eight of wands. See, I told you, you had a lot of fast, like a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity surrounding you right now. A lot of new ideas, uh, possibly new people. Uh, the, the eight of wands also talks about travel. So pile number three, you're going on a trip. Okay. You're going on a trip. You're going to be traveling. Maybe that was a big theme for you this year. Uh, you're going to be leaving home. Um, and I feel like you're also going to be healing. Like if you are somebody that's been afraid of travel or afraid of going places, you're like regaining your audacity, your independence, your boldness. Like there's something about regaining a part of yourself that you didn't even know was missing. Like this is an opportunity that when it comes, you need to grab hold of it, even if you're a little bit afraid, because it's going to help you grow as a person in ways that you never could have previously perceived or thought is what I'm hearing from spirit. Like this is going to be even more important than you realized initially. And let's see what else. Three of Thunder, this is usually the card of heartbreak, but in a positive, like what joyously could be coming towards you with that is not a heartbreak, but a healing from a heartbreak. Uh, maybe the place you're going was somewhere you had your heart broken before and you're going back to like heal those pieces, like ley lines and not like, per I feel like 
I feel like when you go back and visit somewhere that you've been before where you were hurting, it's like, oh, you know, you got to go laugh where you cried. But also I believe in personal ley lines, not just like astro cartography or like ley lines where people have said like magic happens here, you know, like vortexes in Arizona and stuff. But I believe we have personal ley lines too. If you've gone somewhere and felt some type of way, like we leave energy imprints too. And there's a piece of yourself that needs to be called back. I'm hearing your reading is like real personal. I don't know how many of y'all are going to pick pile three, but I feel like this reading is way more personal so far. Um, yeah, there's just, there's something about like calling back parts of yourself, regaining yourself, healing yourself. And it's gonna, you're gonna come back from this, these trips, these vacations, this travel, and you're gonna feel like your soul is just like renewed. Okay, but let's go ahead and pull some astrology cards now. All right, we have Saturn here. So Saturn, this is like, Saturn is like the big lesson learner. You could be somebody that's in your Saturn return right now as well. We have Saturn in Pisces right now. So if you're somebody with a natal Saturn in Pisces, you would be going through a return. But Saturn being here as something that's joyous and blessing you, it's like your hard work finally pays off. What you have wanted for such a long time is finally here. Like, when Saturn blesses your life and your chart, which happens to everybody throughout their life, as long as they make it as far as their late 20s, early 30s, it happens at least once. Um, when Saturn blesses your life, it's like the stuff you never thought you would get, the stuff that's always been out of reach for you. Um, you know, this could be like more money, a home, more travel, more adventure, children, marriage, uh, assets. There are so many things that come and it's like, it, it makes you feel like you, you finally did something right. You know, if you feel like you've gotten a lot of no's in a certain area of your life. So Saturn really comes to deal out those big blessings, Okay, then we have the feminine. So you're getting into more of your feminine receiving energy. This is like, if you're going somewhere where there's an ocean, I do feel like you felt called there because the feminine was calling you. I believe that when you wake up to your feminine energy, whether you are somebody that identifies as non-binary, male, female, all betwixt and in between, it doesn't matter. Like not that it doesn't matter, but it, it doesn't Everybody has feminine and masculine energy. We don't even need to call them that. It could be fire and water. It could be yin and yang. Everybody has both. But I do feel that when your feminine energy activates regardless, it's a call. It's a call. You're being called by the feminine to basically, basically step into that divine feminine power. And I'm sorry, my camera cut off there a second ago. I'm not really sure what happened. So I'm kind of monitoring it in this present moment, because it was like, it just randomly shut off. Um, but in any case, uh, you're called to the feminine, you feel a pull to be more in your resting and receiving mode, more in your creatrix energy. And then we have seven, seven corresponds to partnerships, it corresponds to your lucky number might just be seven. And this is like a reminder of that. Um, or the person that you're going to travel with seven could be their favorite, it could be a birthday for you or them. Uh, I just feel like the number seven is showing up in your reading right now, because it's a number that is going to be important in the near future for you. Uh, seven also corresponds to partnerships, businesses, contracts, all things that include that. And then we also have the 11th house, which is the house of Aquarius. So again, the 11th house, it talks about air travel specifically. It also talks about friendships, the ruler of friendship. Um, and it's also 
the 11th house is like your biggest hopes, dreams, and wishes. So again, I really get the sense that the good things that are coming for you, pile number three, it's like a lot of really major, like this is like <clears throat> finally getting to move into a house after wanting that for a decade, finally manifesting the partner that you've been searching your whole life for, finally manifesting a pregnancy when it's something you've wanted for so long. Like it's, it's one of those like things that will literally change your whole life, but it's like big. And I do feel for a lot of you, it's going to come after the epiphany from traveling. So let's go ahead and look at these body cards that I have as well. Uh, really is remember, I'm not a doctor. This is not like a diagnosis or anything. We're just going to see physically kind of the energy of the body, what kind of blessing. Um, it could be more than just that, but we'll see what blessings, what blessings. Spirit, can you tell us what blessings? All right, we have slow. You're being given the gift right now to slow down. You have been somebody that always is really, really fast and you've needed this time in your life. So you're on like a very slow chapter right now. And it, it we also have taste. Oh, okay, so wherever you're gonna go uh, on your travels, I do feel like you're gonna do like a little food tour, right? You know, you're gonna like eat your way through Italy, eat your way through Paris, eat your way through Hawaii, uh, eat your way through Japan or through, you know, California, Florida, Canada, I don't know. You know, I feel like there is food involved um, and food is very like cultural and community based. So this doesn't surprise me. But then with the energy of slow, I think this is why it was so important that I tell you, you got to get your plans right. Because with slow and and this two of thunder, it's like you think you have all this time, but you really don't. So just, you know, keep that in check. Um, I feel like your reading was all over the place, pile number three. And I apologize if my energy felt kind of scattered in this one. There was just kind of a lot of random things that were coming from spirit. So thank you so much, Tarot Stack, for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to check them out. Uh, all of their information will, of course, be down below. Any of the decks I used here today are from there. Uh, literally never have I been disappointed with a deck from Tarot Stack. The quality is always amazing. Colors are amazing. Deck choices, inclusivity, the whole enchilada. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, if you want more from me, y'all, the best thing you can do to support your beautiful, amazing local tarot card reader is go join my Patreon. Just do it. Do it for yourself. Go join my Patreon. You can actually join free, I want to say, for about two weeks uh, just to kind of like try parts of it out and see what's there. Um, and then uh, from that point, you can join in even more if you like what you see. Uh, I put out new content on there roughly once every two weeks-ish. Uh, sometimes I put everything up like once a month for the month and or like sometimes I'll do like something every two weeks. So there's constantly content going up over there though. I do monthly predictions over there. That's where you get those. I do a theme for the month. I go over the astrology, bibliomancy. I also do a lot of math master classes. That's something I've been introducing over the past few months. Uh, we have a master class that went up on vision boarding in December that was really highly well received. And this month we actually have an astrology master class that launched today. So if you want to learn how to read your birth chart, uh, please do come and join that masterclass. It's available on my Patreon and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's literally like how to become your own pocket astrology bestie so you can decode your own chart. Uh, and I would love for you to see that, be a part of it and you get access to like 400 plus posts once you join. So definitely come and check it out. I would love to have you there. If you want to follow me anywhere else, of course, that's always cool too. I've got all my social media. I'm at Chloe Taylor everywhere. And, uh, you know, if you feel like you don't have anything to give, I always want to remind you when you're supporting a small creator, share the video, give the video a like, leave it a comment. Those are all like free ways that help me as a creator or any creator that you love. It like helps support them and really spreads their content out more. So just saying, if you want to leave any of that for me, I would really appreciate it. I love you so much. And uh, please do not forget when you stand on your own authenticity, <clears throat> you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I'll talk to you next time, cozy babe. Bye.
Before we get into your reading, I do just want to talk a little bit about Tarot Stack. Tarot Stack is an online store that sells tarot decks from indie artists. So if you are looking for a special gift for your favorite friend, your favorite spiritual friend or family member, this is a great place to shop as all of these decks are from independent artists that uh, basically you're not shopping like big box or anything. It's more of like small business vibes and you get to help an independent artist be seen a little bit more. And the decks are so cool. Every single deck that we use in today's reading actually comes from tarot stack. And y'all already know if you've been on my channel for a long time that I work with tarot stack all the time. They are honestly, probably one of my favorite brands to work with. I always jump at the chance when I'm given an opportunity to work with them as I just really believe in what they're trying to do here, which is get these small independent artist decks out into the world more into your hands to be seen by more people. And every single deck that I have ever received from Tarot Stack, the card stock is really high quality. The imaging is high quality. The art is always really interesting. And I have genuinely always been pleasantly surprised. So I hope you'll like some of the decks that you see here today. Everything will be linked down below for you, of course. All right, pile number three, if you chose, or excuse me, I'm sorry, pile number four, if you chose this pile, this is going to be for you. So we're just going to give the cards a shuffle. I'm so excited to see what is joyous, what is exciting, what is coming into your life, what is the happening, and what's going to be a blessing or some good things coming your way. All right, let's see. First out the gate, we have the 10 of thunder. All right, bestie. Starting out with a bang. Okay, I'm going to pull a few cards out and then I'll tell you more about them. All right, we have the four of thunder. Oh, this card came out in somebody else's reading as well. Uh, it's a good one. I think a lot of you are going to like it. Okay, we also got the Seed of Wands. This card is a favorite today. It came out three times. Uh, there was only one of y'all that didn't receive it today. Let's see. Ooh, and the Six of Wands. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so right off the bat, the blessings that are coming towards you now are you are completing some projects. You are coming to a place of completion in something like, I feel like this is like, manifesting something really exciting. You're in the final stages. You're starting to see clues of it showing up in your life. Maybe other people in your life are receiving it or you're noticing it for others. So it's genuinely, it's going to happen for you. Okay. Uh, four of thunder. This is all about rest, rest, relaxation, taking some downtime after a really like maybe a long time or a loud time, or it's just like you taking some relaxation, okay? Taking a little vacation or maybe having some downtime at home to just have to yourself. That is really what the Four of Thunder is. And the Seed of Wands, this is the card that so many people have gotten today. This one is all about planting a new seed of creativity. So new creative projects. Uh, it could also be a person entering your life that's a fire sign or has a very loud or vibrant personality. Uh, seed of Wands, it's the same as the Page of Wands. So uh, think creativity, passions, a passionate person, a person full of vital energy. This could also just be you. Then we have the Six of Wands. This card card is usually my fame card. Okay. This is like you get recognition for something in your life or at work, or if you're trying to like go viral or you're trying to, uh, get more eyes on your business. The six of wands is a really powerful card for that. Get like your creativity noticed. Uh, I feel like this rest is coming because you're finally going to see your hard work pay off that you've been putting energy into. Then we have for you the root of thunder, which is the, um, the Root of Thunder is the Night of Thunder. So this is like, I also feel like you're speaking, singing, podcasting, possibly writing, uh, anything that is mercurial or communicative, okay? The uh, Page of Swords or Root of Thunder, the Page of Swords is that like very fast acting, speaking, very intellectual, intelligent. This could be someone entering your life as well. Corresponds to air signs. So that's going to be your Aquarius, uh, Gemini and Libra people. But ultimately, this is like some kind of speaking gig, singing gig, podcasting gig. There's something about you using your voice. It could be through the written word as well. Uh, you using your voice to activate 
something, okay? Activate or initiate something, new project, new passion, new, there's newness here. Then we have the nine of wands. Oh my gosh. So nine of wands, 10 of thunder. So nine of wands, this is all about like sticking to it and not giving up when the going gets tough. So you are seeing something through to the end and you're not taking no for an answer. This is something that you have felt like intuitively really pulled towards. I'm just so excited for you. This is like getting something you've really been working towards and then getting to rest because you finally have achieved it. And like I said, for some of y'all, I do feel like this could be virality or like your creations getting noticed, your TikToks getting seen, your YouTube videos getting seen, your podcast getting seen, your small business getting more eyes because somebody shared it on their social medias. It's something like that. Okay. Now I also have some astrology cards I'd like to use to get some more information out. So we're going to look at those next. All right, let's see. We have water. So water signs, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Water is also like a very feminine, uh, it's like the feminine element. Uh, water also corresponds to like the womb space, your mother, right? Because the watery womb, oceans, uh, lakes, rivers. But water... I would say the ultimate connection is an emotional one. So I do feel like right now a gift or a blessing that is being bestowed on you is like emotional clarity, feeling like emotionally well. Then we have the Pluto card. So also some form of like really crazy transformation because Pluto in astrology, it changes signs once every like 15 to 20 years It's a very long transiting planet. And we're actually experiencing the shift from Pluto in Capricorn to Pluto in Aquarius. It's finishing in uh, tropical astrology. It's finishing this year. After 2024, Pluto will no longer be in Capricorn, like in your lifetime again, because it takes something like 258 or 78, I think it's 258 years to come back to a sign. So it takes that long to go through all 12 zodiac signs or all 12 constellations. So you'll never see this transit again. And my point to bringing this up is maybe you're somebody with a lot of Capricorn placements because this would have really affected you quite heavily, like your whole life for the most part or your whole adult life could have fallen into this. And it's like a deep transformation. Also, if you're a Capricorn rising, uh, this was very, very, very much about you, about the self, because this would have been in your first house of self. So I would say expect like to go through a financial upgrade next. Um, and if you want more like astrology stuff like this, like what I'm giving you based off your rising sign, my Patreon, every single month I go over the astrology predictions for y'all, uh, both with the tarot, astrology, and bibliomancy every month. And it's detailed as, as hell. Like it's like an hour long video every single month where I go over all this stuff in detail. Uh, so check out my Patreon if you want access to that. But I also see that we have Scorpio here for you. Scorpio is the sign that rules over death, transformation, occultism, sexual desire. Uh, it also rules over your assets, like how your money commingles with other people's. I would say in terms of a blessing though coming your way, like I feel like your spirituality is reaching new heights. Like you're having a spiritual awakening again. You maybe have already experienced one, but you're going to be experiencing another and it's meant to come to bless your life. Then we have the waning gibbous. So when the moon is in waning, it's building down to a new moon for something to start new. And when we're in the waning gibbous stage, it's, you know, we're not too far waned back from the full moon. We're still pretty close to it at that stage. But it's like we are, we're still kind of in, in a, we're still kind of in a phase where we're on like the come down. So it's like, I feel like this to me gives me like relaxed energy as well, because full moons are really like heightened sense, right? So when you 
think about like a waning gibbous, everything would be like coming down off of that. So I do feel like, again, you're going to have this time period of like deep, thoughtful relaxation. If you've been asking for that, know that that's a major blessing coming towards you right now. Next, I want to look at some of these body cards. Uh, these are just like, uh, please remember, I'm not like a medical professional or anything. Some of the cards are chakra based. Some of them are body sensation based. Uh, I just want to see what blessings are like through this, through the somatic cards you're going to be getting. Okay. Oh, we have slow, which actually pile number three had the slow card. You have slow, which again, I really think a big blessing that's coming for you is the privilege to be able to slow down because in today's world, lots of us don't feel like we have time for that, right? That's very a very common experience in today's society. And so this is going to be a gift and a privilege that's given to you so that you can actually work on your passions, work on your creativity, work on your spirituality, and kind of have just like a nice, serene, blissful time period in your life. And then we have meditate. So you're also going to be getting closer to yourself, closer to your spirituality, closer to your center, closer to like your, I feel like you're also getting like a perspective shift. I'm hearing pile number four, like there's something about changing your mind while uh, seeing something in meditation or um, going into meditate. And I just want to assure those of you that are like, I hate meditating or it doesn't work for me. You're so valid and you do not have to just like sit cross-legged or laying down trying to, you know, head empty, etc. It doesn't have to be like that. You can be doing the dishes and thinking, um, or meditating or be it's meditation is really just about being in the present moment instead of being in your head or, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be this, like my head's empty. There's no thoughts and I'm laying here. It can be an active thing. Uh, I find that that's the only way that I really feel like I can meditate. I have a very quick mind and, uh, I just, I feel for those of y'all that feel like you can't meditate because I promise you that you can, it's just, you need to find your way of doing it. And I feel like I still want to pull, I didn't do this for any of the other piles, but I want to pull y'all an Ocean's Dreams card. I just feel really pulled for you for some reason. Like there's something here that you need to hear. So pile number four, you're special today. Uh, I just want to see. I'm going to leave the book out because I might need to read from it. But we'll see. emergence. Okay. Let's see what I'm going to read this one from the book spirit really like just told me to grab this and read directly from the book because sometimes it's like that. Usually I try to feel into it without the book, but when I was pulling it, I felt like we needed this. So this says integration, soul prism, echoes of time. I am multifaceted. I'm always growing and evolving. I'm coming into my fullest potential. Shrouded in the mists of many lifetimes, it is believed by numerous spiritual traditions that we awaken within a certain level of amnesia upon our birth. Over time, we may remember facets of our previous embodiment as the oceans of our planet carry ancient codes of wisdom from many ages. So too do our earthly incarnations. The sense of knowing may appear as strange familiarities to previous lives, the lands we dream of and the uncanny connections we form with soulmates and friends. Emergence is a key of growing and evolving. It describes the sum of many lifetimes and lessons we move through as we follow and forge our own path along the eternal coil. We all transition through our own intentions. Sometimes these are positive, while in other moments they bring us pain or disconnection. Expectation can also keep us in a state of frozen evolution. Without the challenges we face that... that fundamentally change us, we may lose traction with how far we can fully grow into our fullest potential. Are there any patterns in your life that seem to be repeating? 
This card speaks of the patterns that we carry with us throughout lifetimes and the lessons that seem to be on repeat. These are often moment these are often moments that we may need to wade through until we fully understand the extent of what they have to offer us. Until we can retrieve these lessons to their fullest, we may continuously drift towards the same experience over and over again. This card comes as a reminder to be gentle with yourself and to know how vital it is to appreciate your past versions, including all of the phases that you have moved through and where you are now. The infinite prism of your soul star shines with many facets and dimensions, filled with all the ups and downs, the mistakes and discoveries and everything in between. Love with each piece and moment of what makes you who you are and know that you are already imperfectly perfect. Spirit just really wanted you to have that message. Thank you so much, Tarot Stack, for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to check them out. Uh, all of their information will, of course, be down below. Any of the decks I used here today are from there. Uh, literally never have I been disappointed with a deck from Tarot Stack. The quality is always amazing. Colors are amazing. Deck choices, inclusivity, the whole enchilada. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, if you want more from me, y'all, the best thing you can do to support your beautiful, amazing local tarot card reader is go join my Patreon. Just do it. Do it for yourself. Go join my Patreon. You can actually join free, I want to say, for about two weeks uh, just to kind of like try parts of it out and see what's there. Um, and then uh, from that point, you can join in even more if you like what you see. Uh, I put out new content on there roughly once every two weeks-ish. Uh, sometimes I put everything up like once a month for the month and or like sometimes I'll do like something every two weeks. So there's constantly content going up over there though. I do monthly predictions over there. That's where you get those. I do a theme for the month. I go over the astrology, bibliomancy. I also do a lot of math master classes. That's something I've been introducing over the past few months. Uh, we have a master class that went up on vision boarding in December that was really highly well received. And this month we actually have an astrology master class that launched today. So if you want to learn how to read your birth chart, uh, please do come and join that masterclass. It's available on my Patreon and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's literally like how to become your own pocket astrology bestie so you can decode your own charts. Uh, and I would love for you to see that, be a part of it and you get access to like 400 plus posts once you join. So definitely come and check it out. I would love to have you there. If you want to follow me anywhere else, of course, that's always cool too. I've got all my social media. I'm at Chloe Taylor everywhere. And, uh, you know, if you feel like you don't have anything to give, I always want to remind you when you're supporting a small creator, share the video, give the video a like, leave it a comment. Those are all like free ways that help me as a creator or any creator that you love. It like helps support them and really spreads their content out more. So just saying, if you want to leave any of that for me, I would really appreciate it. I love you so much. And uh, please do not forget when you stand in your own authenticity, <clears throat> you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I'll talk to you next time, cozy babe. Bye.